I can't believe I'm standing in a Home Depot buying gardening accessories with Ted Sim from Aperture. <laughs> well, the world is a weird place. Well, there's all kinds of things you can do with it, and it is really inexpensive. All right, Andy Mogul, we gotta talk about something. This right here is a truck that basically all Hollywood filmmakers have used. Unlike most production vehicles, it's not filled with stands or lights or costumes. In fact, this whole vehicle is actually filled with just one thing, water. Regular, ordinary water. So, what is the deal with this thing? How is regular, ordinary water getting used on so many film sets? And if it's so important, how can indie filmmakers start using it today? Well, I'm Ted. Nice to see you again. This is Indie Mogul, and let's do this. So to find out the answer to our question, I called up my friend Phil Rhodes, a writer for the American Cinematographer, to come and actually let us know what's the deal with all this water. A lot of the time, if you're watching car commercials or your favorite sci-fi movie, one of the things you often see is that things are covered in water. Okay, so I get it. Water gets used to create rain. But here is my main problem. When I visit high-end film sets, sometimes they have tankers and they're shooting scenes that have nothing to do with weather or precipitation. In fact, sometimes I'll see tankers even in full daylight. What effect is being used that's worth bringing out a full truck, an operator, and who knows how many gallons of water for? So now this is just a small portion of our discussion with Phil. If you want to hear the full discussion, make sure you tune into the podcast link. We're going to put that down below. So why are we talking about water today? Water is... Uh kind of inexpensive way to make things look better. Um, mm. The amount it's used is enormous if you start looking at it. People don't see it because you think, oh, it's raining, it's raining, the street's wet, the street's wet. You don't really see it. It makes things higher in contrast. It makes things shine. It may brings out texture in things. What specifically are the functions or the ways that we can use it to kind of enhance our scenes? Well, there's three things that, that spring to mind. I mean, just wetting down the ground. Number one, wet downs. If you cast water on anything, a person, a, a roadway, it decreases the diffusion of the light, to put it in technical terms. It makes it more specular. So you've got either a shine mm -hmm. or not. You mm -hmm. either see a reflection of the light source or you don't. If you look at scenes from Blade Runner where the guy's hanging onto the edge of the roof, there's blue highlights on his fingers mm. because you're seeing a reflection of a light. This is useful for all kinds of scenarios. In fact, the most common place that I've seen this used for is using water to help darken overexposed sidewalks. Number two, reflections. If you want to be able to see a reflection of something, then you need a pool of water. It needs to be something reasonably unbroken. Um, of course, you know, if you went down your roadway, you're going to see a reflection of the car headlights up ahead and as they come around the corner and it'll, it'll shine on the roadway. If yeah. you want it to be a visible reflection, then of course you need a solid unbroken pool of water and it needs to be fairly still. Yeah. What you're seeing is reflection. People say, well, it brings out texture in the roadway. What it actually does is you're seeing reflections of all the things that are beyond the roadway, skipping mm. off the... All the things you know, that are being backlit essentially yeah. are bouncing up. Yeah, if you've got a, a light that's beyond, beyond what you're shooting, it's coming yeah. off the roadway and bouncing up towards you. So the idea of revealing texture and seeing reflections is kind of the same thing. Thing when you get into it. One of the tough things about doing that is if you're in a car or a house and you yeah. want um, that sort of light, that sort of water on the windows, mm -hmm. is doing it without creating a lot of noise and destroying the dialogue recording. It's quite hard to do. The other thing you can do that's fun, which we don't have an example of, put hard light through that, like from a Leco. Mm -hmm. And then, you, of course, you get the projected shape of the water coming down the wall, which is a particularly pretty thing. You know, there's, there's a, a sort of trope that you get in movies where someone's asleep in bed in the rainy city and you, you get the projected you effect the of the water. water on their yeah. face. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the easy way of doing that, actually, is to shoot some water on glass uh, as a video clip and play it back on a video projector. Water can lie on the ground, it can fall down. Um, but of course, you boil it and you've got steam. Finally, we've come to our last and final effect caused by water, steam. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ted, are you asking me to boil water on set? I mean, how on earth am I going to do that? These things right here are strippers. Wall, wall strippers. Wall, wallpaper strippers. And as dumb as they sound, apparently they're actually the industry standard for creating steam. While I understand that steam can be used to create beautiful images in the same way that maybe fog or haze can help enhance a frame, in that case, why not just use fog or haze? Well, I mean, the, the steam doesn't hang around. You turn the steam off, it billows and it goes away. It's quite power hungry, but it is pretty inexpensive. And you know, if you've got your, your action hero striding along the corridor, yeah. bursting through the clouds of steam, it looks great. So the only thing to be aware of is if you're doing an exterior scene, it depends, the weather will affect it. In cold weather, it's much more visible and yeah. you get a sort of 20 foot, 30 foot column of, you know, rising vapor off this thing. Steam is invisible. Yeah. What you're seeing is the water vapor after it condenses out of the air. So mm -hmm. if the air is warm, it doesn't condense and therefore it's just invisible. So this shot right here, I mean, it would be so easy for all of this on the bottom here just to go totally black. 
Oh. See that little hot highlight right, yeah. right at the bottom of the screen there? Yeah. That would have been calculated. I mean, that's a reflection, I think, of this of this light up the top. These, mm, these are practical street lights. I can see maybe. these lights right here, yeah. And, you know, if you move the camera to the left or right, you would lose that highlight because that's only going to be visible when there's a straight line between us, that spot on the ground, and that light. That's mm -hmm. been chosen. That's not by chance. Mm -hmm. And neither is the fact that you can see the red, which gives you color contrast in the frame. It all depends on one, the amount of space that you need to wet down, and two, the speed at which your water is going to disappear when applied. But all in all, for a lot of indie filmmakers, I don't think you need it. I don't think you need a truck full of water to wet down a small area. In fact, if you're doing a tight enough scene, I think you'll be good with just a couple of buckets, maybe a garden hose, and one of these wallpaper thingies. So today we're not just going to talk, we're actually going to do it. We're gonna shoot something with wet downs, with water. We're gonna show you some steam effects and rain effects in motion. So here we go, let's do this. Oh, All right, so, okay, we okay, we got water. There's something here. All right, let's go to Home Depot. Let's go. So the first thing that we did was go to the hardware store and pick up exactly what I just mentioned. A bucket. My one big bucket. Two really long garden hoses. I am hose spokes model. Got it, good, good, good. Wallpaper strippers. Where do we find wallpaper strippers? Wall strippers. Wallpaper strippers. You guys have wallpaper strippers? Wallpaper strippers. Just to find out that they might not have wallpaper strippers. Very sad. Uh, we'll see though. You go all the way down to end of 19. And I'm 17. Uh, 17. Oh, it's right here. So the power steamer is right here. We're going to go with two because we don't want to burn the building down. They're pretty affordable, honestly. They're like $45 a piece. So as far as steaming options go, I'm pretty satisfied with this. And it just takes regular water, right? It does just take regular water. Good. And one of these things. Now, the most important thing that Phil mentioned was that if you're looking to try to accomplish a rain effect, you need a hose that can spray at a constant rate with an even spread. Now, after that, we went ahead and we set up our scene. Since we were inspired by Blade Runner, we decided to try and recreate a similar scene using just my motorcycle and our friend Aurelio, who didn't know what this episode was about or that he would get very wet. But shout out to Aurelio, MVP of the shoot. The next thing that we did was begin to wet down our ground. Since we were using a couple pretty simple parking lot spaces, we made a point to try to make the coverage as even as possible and try to avoid creating puddles whenever possible. After that, it was all about setting up our garden hoses to true traditional C stands. We rigged them up straight up on the left and the right of the frame and then pushed water pressure to max power to get the most even and heavy rain coverage that we could. Bang, blast in the air at night. Don't get wet, me! <laughs> and voila. Not only a perfect wet down, but also a great looking rain effect for next to nothing. Again, whatever the cost of water is, depends on where you are. Kind of expensive here in LA, to be honest. After this, we went to work utilizing everything we learned. We set up our frame. In this shoot, we're using a red helium and shooting an 8K. Don't get it wet. Thank you, we will not get this. Is it overkill? Yes, but we also wanted to make sure it looked beautiful and I wanted to show the full extent of what this water was capable of adding. Now, a couple of things I want to point out about this frame, since I know you guys are going to ask, but the talent is lit almost entirely with one light and a soft box. On the back here, we've got two lights pinging the background to introduce a little bit more color contrast, one with some orange on it, one with some green on it. But the key additional lights that we're using here are these ones right here. One on the roof, which yes, totally climbed up on top of, and it's a hard, bright light that is being used to backlight the rain. Again, backlighting rain with a dark backdrop is the key to making it visible. Real quick before we move on, you were talking about uh, rain needing to be thicker and heavier in mm. filmmaking than it is in actually real life. I mean, I think it's because it gets motion blurred. In reality, rain is not that visible, especially if you're only looking over a short distance. If you're looking yeah. down, a, down a street, rain stops looking like falling particles and it starts just looking like fog. But backlighting, it helps enormously because then nice. each, each brain drop becomes a little reflector and you've got the streaks coming down. That much, that's much more. Yeah, anyone out there trying to cover water effects, make sure you backlight that rain, otherwise you're not gonna yeah. Does it matter if it's hard or soft light? Hard light will, hard light will, will make it, because you're trying to make these little spherical raindrops it's glint. Yeah, you, know, you need a hard light to do that. Absolutely. Right? Number two, these tubes right here, which were actually set up in the back, try to mimic the neon look that Blade Runner is so famous for. Now these tubes acted as not only practicals and visual interest, something in the frame to make it a little bit more interesting, a little more sci-fi, but they also perfectly reflect off the wet down ground, effectively filling in the entire bottom half of the frame it brings out more texture like Phil promised, and it makes the whole frame just feel a little bit more full and a little bit more stylized. Now, after that, it was just about setting up the frame. We set up a little dolly to roll and get some sidetracking movement, and voila, this is how it turned out. Now, all in all, 
I think the scene turned out amazingly, actually. If you see the before and the after of this parking lot, just the water by itself adds so much more texture to a frame that would normally be pretty dull. And to do a true comparison to some more indie cameras on the market, we also shot the same scene with the Canon 60 Mark II, a sub $1,000 DSLR that's used by mostly vloggers. And lo and behold, it also looks great. It's almost like if you got good lighting and you're uploading for YouTube, your camera doesn't matter that much. Man, somebody's gonna kill me after I say this enough time. Stop buying gimbals and stop buying cameras and start buying some lights. And I'm not just saying that because I run a lighting company, okay? Backlight was the key. Backlight, yeah. Um, getting the light almost firing into the camera, but not quite. Just so that light comes out of your light, through yes. the raindrop and into the lens with minimum bend. So shine, we've got the actual rain, and then we've got the steam. We had somehow three elements of water yeah. into the same frame. But they all looked, they all work together. They're, they're different. Worked, worked out quite well, I think, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what the last movie scene that you saw one of these wet down effects used for. My name is Ted and this is Indie Mogul. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that button. Let us know if you want more content like this or what else you want to see. But other than that, we'll catch you guys next time. I'm also not quite sure where you'd be legally with spraying water on the road if someone then slid off and crashed into a telegraph <laughs> Especially bowl. if it's that oily water or yeah, you're spraying milk at people's houses. Yeah. <laughs>